So welcome everybody to the latest uh, Joda webinar. Today it's the 6th of June 2022 and it's my absolute pleasure today to be working with David Riley who's going to be talking to us all around Triptico which if you haven't seen before is a fabulous uh, resource for creating interactive activities and today we're particularly looking at how we can use Triptico in languages so David will be sharing lots and lots of different examples um, probably more, more or less in, in English I think I'm not sure how good uh, David's French, German, Spanish is, but you'll be able to see by watching the examples how you can then uh, use those in your language lessons. Delighted to see so many people coming along and watching live. This is fantastic. If you have any questions for David, please put them in the chat. Um, uh, put the letter Q in front of your question to make it really clear to me what the question is, and then I will be collecting them in a Google Doc as per normal and then putting them to David when we have a natural pause. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce David Riley. He's going to talk to us all about Triptico. Over to you, David. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for uh, coming along and, and watching this session. I hope you'll find it to be um, helpful. I'll put together a little presentation. I've actually used Triptico to, to make this. So I think everything that I'm going to show you is uh, or has been built um, with Triptico. As Joe said, it's, uh, I will do most of the sort of examples will be in English and most of the uh, activities that I create will be in English, but teachers use Triptico all over the world in all different languages. It's pretty much a blank canvas and, and you put in whichever con uh, the content that you would like. So it could be in French or Spanish or Chinese or Japanese. And as I say, got Triptico users all over the world. Um, so this is a little presentation that I made in Triptico, a brand new feature called the Lesson Builder. Um, and so what I've done, I've sort of collected a few different um, uh, activities, which we'll have a little look at, um, and then we'll actually have a go at creating some brand new activities. And I'll show you hopefully how, uh, how straightforward and easy that is. So one of the um, uh, resources on Triptico is this order sorter. So we can take some text and we can put it into um, uh, a different order or correct order or um, in this case, I've got the sort of order of the session. So I thought we could do first I'll give you a little introduction, tell you a little bit about Triptico, hopefully answer the question, what is Triptico? Then we'll have a look at some examples. I've just got a very simple um, class list, which we use with a few of the different resources. Very easy to uh, add your own classes into Triptico. Then we'll have a look at some examples which are more specific to language learning. And if you're not a language teacher, I think most people in this session are, but if you're watching the video, we've got colleagues who um, teach other subjects. My subject was English literature. So I created all these resources for teaching Shakespeare and poetry and you know different novels and things like that, but it can be used across the entire curriculum uh, of people using it in, in all different subjects. Um, but today we'll look at some uh, language examples. Then we'll have a little go at creating an activity. And then I'll show you how you can open and share that activity with your students or with your colleagues. And then I've put at the end any questions, but as Joe said, if at any point you've got any questions um, at all, then just add them to the chat and we'll, we'll go through those uh, as and when. Okay, so first thing, uh, well, I suppose the first thing would be to look at this particular resource and to see, I don't know if people want to type in the chat, how a resource like this could potentially be used in um, language teaching. I know I used to use it when I was teaching uh, literature, but has anyone got any ideas of how something like this, where you can put statements or sentences or words into a particular order could be helpful. I'll tell you how I used to use it, just if people are, are typing things in. I used to quite like um, doing activities where there wasn't necessarily a right or wrong answer. So I would have got some um, examples where we'd, if we'd been studying Romeo and Juliet, we might say who's most to blame for the death of Juliet. And sort of the different characters here and the students would discuss and debate which character they thought was most to blame for the death of Juliet and there might be a bit of disagreement in the class and some people might say well actually we had this character right at the very top um, and I quite like that because there wasn't necessarily a right or wrong answer it was just something that we could discuss and I had a little thing for language teachers maybe you could have a sentence why do we learn a language and then you could have lots of um, statements here and the students could say well to improve employment possibilities or to uh, make travel more accessible or something like that and you can also as well you can move the um, things across and they'll turn red if I was to let go of it now it would be deleted so you can even have a few sort of maybe start by getting rid of three or four panels and then put the rest in the correct order um, but yeah ordering the events in the story says Jenny yeah absolutely and again that could be in any um, language um, ordering the paragraph in an essay absolutely it could be again I was trying to think of ideas for language teaching it could even be a sort of morning routine so it could be in French you know that you get up, you clean your teeth, you have your breakfast, 
um, get dressed, walk to school. Um, so again, the students could put that into the correct order. It could be, yeah, for dialogues, absolutely. Yeah, so you could have different parts of a conversation that the students put into the correct order. You could also have students' names in here. I used to use it sometimes as a bit of a motivational thing. So I'd, if someone answered a particular, you know, answered a, a question particularly well, then I might move them up. Um, and so the students would be competing to sort of get to, to the top of the, uh, the leaderboard. Um, so that hopefully, you know, you'll see that with all these different resources, they're all very, very adaptable and you can use them in lots of different ways. I'd even use it maybe if we we're doing group work for which group I wanted to present first. Um, so all sorts of different things that you could do. Could even be uh, events in a timeline. Um, it could be um, a direction. So from your classroom to the canteen, maybe in, in Spanish, or, you know, to walk out the door, turn left, down the stairs, whatever it would be. And um, someone's asked a, a quick question. Can students who are watching the lesson do the clicking too? Uh, yeah, it, it wouldn't be sort of um, move the things on your screen, but yeah, students could load this up and they could all be working independently or in groups and then feedback what it, um, what they've done on their, on their particular thing. So yeah, so there's um, um, lots of ways in which you can which can use that particular resource. I've used it for the order of the session. You could do it for an order of a lesson and um, whatever you wanted to do. Okay, so what is Triptico? So Triptico is a collection of resources just like this, which you can edit and adapt and use in lots and lots and lots of different ways um, for teaching lots of different subjects. Like I say, for me, it was for teaching English literature, <clears throat> but I know the teachers around the, the world use it for all sorts of different things. Uh, one of the first things you might like to create, which is just a nice sort of simple example is a class list so i've put together a simple class list of i think i picked 12 people who'd signed up for the session today and opened that with um this group resource um so this sort of lesson all that i've done is just put in lots of different examples of different triptychal resources into this particular presentation so to create your class list all that i did in the triptychal website I've just given a little title, Zoom June, and then I just chose some names. So I just chose Susan, Jadranka, Christina, and so on. I think I put about 12 people. There we go, 12 different people. And when you're creating, we'll have a look at this in more detail later, but when you're creating for Triptico, if you think of it a little bit like creating a, a pack of cards. So in this case, I've just created a card for each particular name. And cards can have one side or two sides. They can have text on the front and an image on the back, just like a any, any sort of real um, card. In this case, because it's just a simple class list, I've just used a one-sided card and I've just put a name on each um, on each one. Uh, Glenn with an idea, yeah, for the uh, order sorter to, to rearrange the, the lyrics in a song, that's a really good idea as well. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so yeah, so let's see what we can do with this simple class list. So I've got all my names or names of some of the people in this session today and so I can use this resource which is called the group resource to put you into random groups so if I click and drag across to the right I could put you into two groups or put my students into two groups or three groups or four groups or five groups let's see if we put um, people into three groups and then it will just randomly do that I don't know if you can hear the sound there sound seems to have uh, gone off but there's a bit of sound there um, so it's put the uh, group one, Mohan, Jadranka, Tony and Susan, Sarah, Vicky, Christina and Natalie, and then group three, Chris, Glenn, Ursula and Penny. I used to like that, just with, it seemed like putting students into groups was one of these things that, that took longer than it should, especially if I let the students choose their own groups. So this was just a really nice way that I could just instantly put students into groups and there were never any arguments, you know, because the, the computer had sort of selected them at random, it is random. Um, so I've got my three groups. And then what I can do from there if I drag across the other way, so if I drag across to the left, I can then make selections from within this group. So if I wanted to select a student or a person from this session to maybe give me a little bit of feedback, then I can release the mouse button now. I've also selected Mohan. If you're on a touch screen, then obviously you'd just be doing all this with your finger dragging left and right with a mouse at click and drag. I could also select a particular group. So I might select a group and I want them to tell me what they've been discussing or what they've learned so far. I could select one person from each group, perhaps to be the spokesperson. I could select two people from each group as the people that I'd like to present, or I could clear all the panels. So let's just say select one from each. There we go. So I'd say these are the sort of spokespeople for each particular group, Susan, Christina, and Penny. 
And then I can, if I wanted to, just clear all the panels and incidentally put people in new groups. So there we go. So that's one thing that you can do with a class list. Again, it's just a simple set of cards with all the names of the people on. And in that case, I've opened it with the group resource. I've got another example. So this is just a selector. So all that I would do is pull the triangle down to make a new selection. This will just randomly select one of the class. So I can just pull it down again with a touch screen. You would just drag. Mohan. And I can drag down again. And this time, Christina. So this could be people that I want to give a, um, perhaps I want them to answer a question or I want them to, you know, perhaps we had an activity where we had to name in French different things we might find in a supermarket. And so I would say, there are kind of something that you could find in a supermarket. You could open these resources as well, or this resource in particular with, it doesn't necessarily have to be a list of student names. It could be a list of keywords or words that you want students to define or translate or, or whatever. So there's lots of different uh, ways that you could use this. There we go. So that's the exact same saved activity. Can open it again, or I've tried it here. So I've put it in a spinner. So this time we've got all the names of my students. So in this case, the, the 12 of the people in this particular session. And so I can click and drag and just make a random selection. So it's selected Penny. Um, I can do it uh, in the again. I've selected the students. And it's selected Sarah. Um, so it's select a different student each time. Unless you go in and change it, you can change it. So rather than selecting a sequence, you can have it select um, in order. So in the order in which you type the names, or you could have it completely random, in which case it may select Penny five times in a row. Um, but for this, we'll keep it in a sequence. You can also hide the content. This was a, a teacher um, sent me an email, asked if we could sort of hide the content on the spinner. So you can do that too. So perhaps you've got lots of different words here. Um, you know, could supermarkets in my head for some reason, but there could be different things that you find in the supermarket or different places that you might choose to go of an evening or something like that, and then you don't actually see uh, each segment until it's selected. Um, so that's the spinner. So again, it's just that exact same file, which is one of the biggest changes with Triptico in the previous versions. If you'd used Triptico in the past, you would open a resource, then you would create an activity, and the activity will be locked to that resource. If you created it with a spinner, you'd only ever be able to open it with a spinner. With this new version, you create these, as I say, think of it like a pack of cards, and then you can open those cards with lots and lots and lots of different resources. Okay, um, so that's something that you could do with a uh, class list. Um, Go back, I've got our order of the session. So we've seen what is Triptico. We've had a little example of a class list. Um, before we go to language learning, should we see if there's any questions? And if anyone's got any questions, Joe, just on the on the class list, so that sort of... Yeah, yeah, fantastic. So we had uh, the question, how about students who are absent on one day, uh, to which yeah. Monica said that you could just um, remove that name from the list. But I was thinking, could you set this as a homework task or could you just give the link that you're using class for those students who weren't um, present uh, on that particular day who then wanted to catch up? Yeah, absolutely. If it was a resource or a lesson like this, you know, I've just just got some example um, resources in here, but this could be a lesson with, you know, a little bit like a PowerPoint, I suppose, with these interactive elements, then yeah, if the student's absent, you can just share the link. So in this case, if I was to share this with the people in this session now, you'd all be able to access it straight away. You wouldn't need to sign in or anything like that. So, um, yeah, it's really easy to share. I'll show you that um, a little bit later on. In terms of um, students who are absent, yeah, one thing you can do, if I go to Triptico, so here's my class list where I assumed you name. So what you can do, you can click to preview the list. So this is quite handy, if it, especially if it's maybe something someone else has made you on and maybe want to have a little look at it and just check that it's all sort of uh, correct. Um, and you can choose which names or uh, which cards you want to include. So if Susan was absent, I'd just uncheck her name and then she wouldn't be included on the spinner. Um, so if I had a couple of students absent, if Penny was absent, then this would just create a spinner with 10 segments. Um, so that's what you can do with students. It also can be quite helpful if, you, if this was just a low, um, a lot of vocabulary, but you felt there were certain ones the students knew, then you could take out the ones that you, you know, they were quite confident with and just leave in the sort of um, um, the ones that you knew they needed to, to revise or to practice. Um, so that's quite a handy thing to be able to do. 
Um, and then all you would do is just click to open it. So if I was to open it with uh, Spinner again, this time it will open without Susan or Penny. So we've just got 10 names this time. So yeah, if you've got an absent student, then that's a, that's a handy thing to be able to uh, to do, just to remove them temporarily. They won't be deleted from the file, they'll just be temporarily removed for that particular um, resource. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love how simple that is for, for everybody. That's great. Um, I think there's all the questions. We just got a comment, though, from Glenn, um, which is great. Uh, nice to see you, Glenn, here as well. Thanks ever so much for beaming in from Canada. Um, so Glenn's written, students are on, their, on the edge of their seats, virtual or in the face-to-face -face classroom when these awesome selectors are used. Oh, good. So that's great. I think, in my experience, anything which is uh, makes a sound is animated, which is uh, fun, which has some sort of you know uh, competitive nature to it. Is always a big hit, so I, I can. I'm sure that the students absolutely love these uh, activities. It's wonderful. That's great. Yeah, yeah, and as I say, it doesn't necessarily need to be student names. It could be, you know, questions. Yeah, when yeah. we get absolutely. two sided cards, this could be selecting questions, and then we'll click to view the answer. It could be selecting words in Spanish, and we click to see that word in English. So, yeah, as I say, that you know, hopefully that's uh, one of the benefits, the the flexibility of it, and the fact that you can input um, whichever content um, you want. Okay. Um, Right, okay, so go back to my order. So let's go classes. So have a look at some language learning um, examples. I'm sure people are keen to see those. We've got a lot of language teachers here. So I'll move on to slide seven. So this is a very sort of simple example. This is using the bingo resource. Um, so I used to use this a lot with my class, especially for learning things like metaphors and similes and repetition and all these different sort of um, linguistic or literary terms that the students need to use. But again, this is something that can be used in all languages. Here I've got some examples of different, I think there's like different foods or different things you might find in the kitchen. So the idea would be that the students would choose any six of these words. So they could choose pizza, cafe, sell a poivre, et cetera. Choose six and write them on a bingo card. You just quickly create your own bingo card. Then when everyone's got a different bingo card, we've just clicked to play bingo. And I could ask my students to give me a number. So we could start with number nine. And so in this case, it's chosen the peas. So if the students had the French word for peas on their bingo card, then they could um, cross it off. And then we'd keep going until somebody shouted bingo. So again, if someone's got a French word for ice cream on their bingo card, then they would cross that off. And so we'd carry on. So I'll choose six. So we've got watermelon, and pancakes. Cheese. And mine. And then when someone's ready to show, when someone's completed the card, they would shout bingo. Bingo! And then we could go through and check that they have actually got bingo. I can't remember what was uh, what was on there you now. Um well, we chose not to worry, we'll check. I don't think this is going to be <laughs> Okay, so, so someone shouted bingo and the card wasn't complete, so the game would carry on. Um, so yeah, so that's because this is an example which uses images. So again, I'll show you later in the session how we would do that. Um, but the bingo is quite nice, especially when you, you know, you're not necessarily showing them the answer straight away. They've got to actually know the French word for pizza before they can cross it off um, their card. Um, so that's one of the sort of more um, quiz type um, resources. But again, that'll work in any um, language. Um, and you can with this one, so this will just choose 12, but you could have a list, you could have 100 different foods and it'll just randomly choose 12 for you at the start of each new game. So every time you play it, you might add a few new foods, you might end up with a pack of cards which has got, you know, 100 different items and it'll just randomly choose 12 for you, unless you were to preview it and just select the 12 that you wanted to use if you wanted a specific um, 12 things. Okay, so that's bingo. I've also got this, this is um, Word Magnets. This was actually the first resource that I ever made. Uh, I had a class were a little bit sort of, um, I don't know, they weren't, much, weren't very imaginative or adventurous in their sort of language choices. And so I just put lots of different words as magnets on the screen. And I just had them sort of drag two magnets together and just so we could see what sort of effects those two words had when we put them together. And sometimes there were no effect and we just drag them apart. It wasn't particularly impressive, but other times we'd think, wow, those two words together make me think of this, or you know, I would never have put those two words together. And um, so they started using those in the poetry. So it's quite nice and there was no mess. There was nothing for me to cut up or laminate or anything like that. It was all just on the screen and there was no stress for the students. If something didn't work, we'd just drag it back apart. There were no crossing out or things to, to uh, 
Rubel. So I'm not sure if something like that would work in uh, languages, but certainly for this sort of activity um, where we're labeling a picture. So you've got, uh, oh, again, it's just a set of cards, uh, but this time they've been converted into magnets. So you could play this exact same activity with bingo. I'm gonna be showing you how you could do that in a second. Um, and so the idea here would be that students, um, again, they can work in independently on this or in groups, or you could have this on your, if you've got an interactive whiteboard, or an interactive screen, you could ask students to come up from the front and actually move these things around and put them where you think they should go on the, the picture. If you would set this for a homework task, <clears throat> you could perhaps ask the students to take a little screenshot of the completed uh, image once they'd labeled everything, put everything in the correct order. Because this is a two column list, um, I've actually got the English words on the back so you can flip these magnets over. And so you can see that's quite an easy one, but you can actually see the word in English as well so the students can check if they've got it in the right place um, if they wanted to do that. If it was just had one um, column or one side, um, each card only had one side then you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, you could also use this <clears throat> maybe for if these had lots of different words. You can choose different backgrounds. I'll just change this temporarily. Whoops. Um, so I'll just reset the background. So there we go. So we've got no background now. Um, so we've just got this list of words. Um, but you can choose from different templates. So um, let's say we had this. So I used to use this even a simple thing. So I'd open my class list with word magnets and have all my students appear as magnets and then they could drag themselves to the other side of the board when they arrived in class and I could use that for, for taking the register. You can also have um, uh, Venn diagrams. Whoops. So perhaps you could have things you would find keep thinking about supermarkets and I'm honestly hungry, I'm not having tea yet. Um, so it could be things you find in a supermarket, things you would find in a, um, a sports shop and maybe things you would find in both. Maybe not the best example, but um, you know, now you could use a, a Venn diagram. It could be nouns, adverbs, adjectives. You know, there's different backgrounds where you can, um, you know, so if we're here, we could perhaps have past, present and future tenses or nouns, verbs, adverbs, adjectives, and the students have to drag them into the correct um, column. You can also resize the magnets so you can swipe across to make them bigger. So it could be an activity where you've got to choose the things that are the most important, uh, possibly. Um, I also used to use this with my students, but I actually use this when I'm running workshops as well. I'll have the names, the participants in the uh, workshop, and I, and I ask them to sort of, um, move their personal, their own name, according to how um, often they use technology. So they move it up. I've got like a background, which has got different um, sections on it. So they would place their magnet according to how often they use technology, uh, how often they sort of use interactive technology or, or whether it's very sort of passive. And then I ask them to size their magnet according to how confident they are with technology. So some people make their magnets really big. Some people, if they're not very confident, they make their magnet really small. I suppose that could be the same for students, you know, just to get a, a sort of snapshot of where students are, how confident are you with this particular unit of work? And then the students can size their own um, uh, magnets. You can also color code them. So the other thing that I do is I ask, when I run these workshops, I ask um, the participants, how do you feel about technology? So if they're really negative about it, they really don't like to use it. It's not something that they sort of find helpful in their classroom. They might turn their magnet red. And then I've got the challenge during that particular uh, session of turning it orange, which is a bit more neutral or green, which is really positive, really love using technology. And I find it sort of, you know, really helpful um, for motivating my students and so on. You can also delete magnets. Um, so you can click and deleted as well if you had a, a magnet that you wanted to, to um, remove. So word magnets, again, you know, all these resources, hopefully um, incredibly flexible. This one's used in loads and loads and loads of different ways. The first example I showed you, annotating an image, you could be dragging together different things to make a sentence. Um, you could have, you know, the sort of different um, word endings. Um, you could have different words in different languages, all sorts of different things that you can do. Um, with word magnets and then again you know if you've got content on the back you can flip that over and, and see what's written on on the back um so that's word magnets um open with that i'll just show you quickly just because i know how oh no i can't know I'll, I'll show you but that same activity i'll show you how we can open it with um with different resources too later cool. uh, well, when we go for uh, before we go to the next activity we've yeah. got a question um around how does the site work on a on a smartphone so for example if you were setting a homework task how yeah. this sort of reordering activity how 
um, easy it would be to do if you had a smaller screen, for example. Yeah, no, it should be absolutely fine. So I've got to see that there. So this is my phone. So there we go. So we've got a trip to activity. So the students would just, this is one of the quiz type resources. And that's not the best example, but uh, I can't read it backwards, but. Got it. Yeah. Good. Yeah, no, it will work absolutely fine. So you don't have to install anything. It will work uh, straight away on a smartphone or, or iPad or, or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. As long as you've got a browser, web, uh, a sort of web browser, which uh, she would have. So uh, yeah, it would all work absolutely fine. Um, that's but yeah, I'll be to sharing. Sorry. Joe. Sorry, should we do another couple of questions? Is that all right? Of course it is. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. So we had another question from uh, Delphine around, is there a Google Classroom integration or would you just share the link uh, via, via Google Classroom, that, but you wouldn't have like a dedicated integration of Google Classroom with Triptico? Is that right? Yeah, no, I haven't got, yeah, there's no, yeah, like I say, no dedicated integration, but yeah, you could share the link or you could share, what comes sharing is even easier than sharing a link, you, each um, individual save file as a unique code, so rather than sharing a really long link, you know, like in this case, you know, sharing that long link, which you can do if you wanted to, if you want to post it in Google Classroom, and it's just clicking a link, that's fine, but if you wanted to give the students a, um, a code in the classroom, so this whole lesson is just, it's got the code 45888, so I'll just show you what a student would do with that code. So all a student would do, they would visit the Triptico homepage. They don't need to sign in. They don't need to create an account, anything like that. If you see at the bottom, it says, are oh, you a student with a code? They would click there. They type in the code you've given them, which in this case was 45888. Submit that code. It's just my browser opening a new window, but that's fine. And there we go. They'd have the, the lesson. In this case, it's just a little presentation that I've put together, but this could be all lesson about um, you know, whatever your particular lesson was on, and then they'd just be able to work through that. That's awesome. And in relation to GDPR, um, obviously the website is GDPR compliant and people can check out the, the privacy um, disclaimer around that. But in relation to uh, the students, um, let's say doing homework, none there's, there's no student data recorded on the site, is there? No, absolutely not. Like I say, they don't need to create an account. They don't need to yeah. sign up. They don't need to register their email address or the name or anything like that. Anybody can just go onto the Triptico homepage, click that button and type in a code. I know that that's one of my class lists, for example. And so they can open it with, uh, let's just stick with the, the spinner. So yeah, so it hasn't asked me to sign in or anything like that. And then the students would have this, you know, if this was um you know sort of key vocabulary on a particular unit and they'd be able to use this in their own time to revise from um you could even give them a list of codes here's 10 codes for you know that will make perfect revision um activities for um you know a particular unit work one other thing just while we're on shadow i might as well say now while we're doing it um so you can share a code so in this case this is just a simple class list it's just a code that i know off the top of my head when the student presses submit It'll give them a, uh, the list of all the resources that can be used to open that particular save file. So it gives them 21 different options. Um, and that could be handy. You know, you might want to, you know, just the same vocab, but give them the opportunity to have their own little game of bingo or open it with a spinner or open it with a quiz or open it with a, you know, as a, as a pack of cards or whatever. But if you wanted it to open immediately with, let's say, the spinner, all you would do is just add the first two letters of the resource to the code. So if I was to type SP78, it won't, I'll no longer get the option of what it opens with, it'll just straight away open it with the spinner. So that can be quite handy to know too. So if you know that you've got an activity that you want to open with the spinner, you just put that in front. If I was to change it to BI78, it'll open it immediately with Bingo. So that's quite handy too. And I'll maybe recap that when we go back over the um, um, sharing, but I know sometimes you might want the students to be able to open it with lots and lots of different things and have loads of variety to the revision. Sometimes you might want to say, you know, say I want it to open with word magnets um, and word magnets, just put W O and then your code and it'll open immediately with um, word magnets. That's fantastic. And and just, I know you've said this already, but just to, to clarify um, for evidence that students have done their, let's say their homework, you'd ask yeah. them to, take a screenshot and then share that with uh, their teacher by whichever learning management system they're using. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, no, that'd be, that'd be one very easy way to do it. Yeah. So if I was just to take a quick screenshot of if I'd completed that was my um, activity done, then yeah, I can take a screenshot and I could whatever, yeah, send that via email or on a portal or in a PowerPoint or whatever. Um, Fantastic. That's great. Excellent. Lovely. 
Um, right, should we see some more activities? This is great. I lo- I'm loving how you're using Triptico to present as well. I think that's very cool, very meta. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Everything has been Triptico so far. Yeah, this lesson build. I mean, this lesson build, all, all I've put in it so far is um, Triptico resources, but there are lots of different templates. You can use images. Uh, you can add hotspots to images. You can add word scrambles and image scrambles and all sorts of different things. Um, at the moment, I've just used it for um, Triptico resources, but even this can be quite handy. Um, you know, let's say you know in a particular lesson you're going to use four different triptychal activities rather than having to search the database for them, you just put them all in a lesson and then you can just move backwards and forwards between them all. Um, so that's quite handy to be able to do as well. And also then, you know, if you did want to share that with a student, either a student who was absent or even if a student just wanted it for a bit of revision, then uh, all the resources will be in there as well for them to use. Okay, so that's uh, word magnets. Um, we've got this one, which I, this was the one that I showed you quickly on my uh, phone. This is actually using the same words as this. Um, so again, it's just the exact same activity. Let's um, see if I can find it. If I go back to trip, I'll show you how I made it. It's just really easy to make. Let's so get into my account. I think it's just called oops, Spanish Room. So if I click to edit it, you'll be able to see. So all I did, I've just called it Spanish Room. I've actually added the image background because I used it for the labeling activity for word magnets. But all that I've done, rather than just having a single, um, using a single side of each card, I'm actually using the front and the back of the cards now. And so I've just got the word in Spanish on the front and I've got that same word in English on the back. So again, you know, really easy to do. You can even paste, you know, if you've got these lists already, you can paste them into Triptico, makes things even easier. Um, there we go. So I've got 15 different words. If I wanted to add to this, so if this was our sort of starter and, you know, we wanted to add extra words, then you can add as many cards as you want. You would just click to, to add different cards. I used to use this, I say, for teaching um, novels. So we might, at the end of the first chapter, get all the sort of key quotes from that chapter and who said it. And then at the end of the next chapter, we'll add some extra cards with some extra quick key quotes. And then by the time we finish the novel, we've got loads and loads of cards, absolutely, you know, full of quotes that I can then just give to the students to use to revise, or I can use it as a Star Trek activity. Who said this? And when did this say? And what did it reveal about the character? And why was it significant? You know, all these different things, you know, just sort of really sort of um, versatile and, and helpful resources. Um, for me as an English teacher, but there's lots and lots of ways in which you can use that for, for languages too. Yeah, so that's how I made that pack of cards. And then, yeah, so I opened it first with word magnets, the exact same pack of cards. This time I've opened it with the quiz. So the idea would be the students would have to tell me what this, or what, either if I was doing this at the front of the class or they could be working independently in the classroom or at home, they would just click and they get the different um, options. Um, I don't know what that is. Can someone help me out? I would guess it. Chair, chair, it's chair. <laughs> chair in Spanish. <laughs> chair in Spanish, so I'd click chair. I was going to go on with them. There we are. And the idea with this one, this one's called 10 in a row. So the challenge is to try to answer um, 10 questions correctly in a row. Joe? Uh, I'm testing my Spanish now. I've done Spanish. <laughs> I think that's rug. Please help me rug. out in the chat. Let's give it a go. We'll find out. Rug? No, it's not rug. So that's where we get uh, Cortina. Anyone? Cortina in in. Sounds like uh, be Curtin, doesn't it? Curtin, there we are, Curtin. Okay, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. <laughs> could could um, in a moment, could you show us how to do the, the bulk um, entry? You know, you were saying that you can add, if you've got the list already, you can add them yeah. rather than... Uh, but let's carry on with this for, for now. That's definitely wall. I know that one. That's wall. Let's give it a go. Wall. <laughs> We've now got two in a row, so the idea would be to try to get to uh, ten in a row. But again, that's just exactly the same set of cards as I've used for word magnets. I could open that exact same set of cards with bingo. I could open it with cardboard. There's a uh, hidden card, all sorts of different resources that you can use. So I think that's been the biggest improvement from my point of view. Um, again, in the past, I would have made this with word magnets, and it would have been locked as word magnets. I've had to make the entire thing all over again in this quiz resource. To open it with the quiz resource and the other good thing i mean this quiz resource i only finished uh, maybe a month or so ago but as soon as i uploaded to the site all the existing save files work immediately with it so i made this save file years ago but it'll work immediately with all new resources as i add them to the uh, website so that's another good thing so it's not as though well there's a new resource i've got to remake everything 
it'll all work um, pretty much instantly. The only thing to bear in mind, some of the resources like bingo, you need at least 12 cards just to create a game of bingo. If you've only got three cards, then um, you know you wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to have a game of bingo. Um, but that's it. If you you know if it sort of fulfills whatever that resources criteria may be, um, then it will then it will open with that particular resource. Um, so yeah, so that's um, the little uh, quiz resource. So again, I thought it'd be a nice one, you know, as a starter activity, um, or a great one for students learning vocab just to be able to you know let's say that's the one that I opened on my phone. So they'd be able to just sort of do that at home and go through and that one I know is Othello, I'm a bit more confident with the uh, English ones, but they could just, you know, in their own time, they could just sort of um, work through and use that for revision. Um, okay, so there's a few different examples of um, different resources for languages. I said you could do different things with the lesson builder. So here's one thing you can do a sort of a word scramble. So I've just done a very quick word scramble. What do you think of Triptico or there it goes that could be a sentence in um, Spanish or French or you know whichever language you teach um, you can also just put a single word in there and then you jumble up the different letters of the the word um, so yeah so I put that uh, sort of rhetorical question what do you think of Triptico so far hopefully um, you think it's something that could be useful to you I put that's great I hope um, so shall we have a go at creating a new activity? I don't know if that's another good chance just to pause if there are any further questions just about. Um, we haven't like... got any further questions. I was just, um, just to clarify, can you show us how to do that bulk add? If you have, like, yeah, what, I'm thinking, what I'm thinking of is you have like a list of vocab, which uh, it might be easily that, you know, teachers have got a digitized version of their vocab list and they'd love to be able to see how quick and easy it is for them to copy and paste those and put them into Triptico to make a whole set of different activities that'd be wonderful yeah 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 no i'll do that now yeah yeah so okay so have a go at creating our own activity okay so i suppose i should sign out and i'll just show you uh once you've got your triptico account you can if you haven't got an account yet you can create a free account and you can use that to create up to five um save files so hopefully i'll give you a, a chance to to give triptico a good go if you've got an account or your school's bought you an account um, then you can sign in. So I'll sign into my account. The first thing you see when you uh, sign into the Triptico homepage are all your saved files. So I've got loads and loads and loads of um, different saved files. You'll see those. You can filter them. So if I just wanted my saved files um, with the keywords or that relate to French, then I can do that. So it makes things a little bit easier to find. I can also um, set files as favorites. So if I've got certain things, you can see they've got the little heart uh, lit up. So again, that can be another good way to um, um, to find uh, files. You can also go into the public files. So these will be files that other Triptico users have created and, and marked as public. So you have a choice when you create a resource, you can either mark it as private, in which case you'll be the only person that will ever be able to, or that will be able to see it, uh, or you can mark it as public. Um, in which case um, your students will be able to access it and other teachers will be able to search and use it. And you can change, you could have something marked as private and then after the lesson, make it public for students to, to use. So if I was to search French now, you see, I get sort of lots of different activities that other teachers all, all around the world have uh, created. And I can click on those, have a look at it, preview it as I showed you before. And you might think, oh, that's a really good activity. You can set it as a favorite. You could even think that's a really good activity, but it's a little bit too basic for my students. So you could edit it and adapt it and save a, a brand new copy. The original copy will be unaffected, but you'd have a, um, a slightly different um, version in your own save files. And these were the codes I was telling you about. So, you know, when you, if you wanted to share, you can either share the link or as you see each um, save file has got its own um, unique code. Um, you can also, if you've used Triptico in the past, you may have some legacy files. If you're new to Triptico, you don't need to worry about it, but I've obviously used Triptico for years, having made it. Um, and so I've got lots of sort of old, these are from older versions of Triptico. So if you have got save files from an older version, they're not gone. You know, you can still get them. You can still find them on the old database and open them with the new resources. Um, anyway, for now, so your save files, that's what you would see when you open Triptico. If you want to create something, I suppose I should just show you as well. The other thing that's on this page, if you click the bonus resources, there's things like timers. So again, something which I found helpful in the class just to say, right, you've got one minute to write down 10 words we could use to describe Macbeth. Um, just having a timer sort of ticking away at the front of the class, I found really sort of focused 
a student's attention. You can have that counting up or counting down. So you could, you know, say you've got 12 or you give all the class 12 seconds to, um, I don't know, answer a particular question. And then you can have that sort of ticking down while they sort of give you different answers. Um, so anyway, you, know to use, you can use a timer. There's lots of different ways. There's also scoreboards. I used to find that was quite a, a helpful thing as well. So you can have, you know, how many teams you want and give them all different team names. We'll just stick with team one to three at the minute. And then you can just run your own class quiz. Again, just really easy to do. You would just tap the plus. So if team one answers their question correctly and you want to give them five points, you just tap it five times. Uh, if team three answers two questions correctly, then you can tap and give them 10 points. And then it will reorder. The other thing I used to quite like to do, and it's an option on here, you can um, set to random points. So I used to quite like doing this in my classroom. So I'd add points if team four answers correctly, they'll get some points, but nobody knows how many points they're going to get. So we add, and it's given them eight points. Um, team two might answer a question, and they get 11 points. So it's completely unfair, but I used to quite like doing it, um, especially when I was one of the sort of teams and you can take random points away too. So that's team three back to zero. But it also as well, it meant that even if you, as, as, you, as you're as um, doing a quiz, rather than knowing that you're 10 points behind and there's only five points available, it added a bit of volatility to the uh, to the quiz if suddenly somebody got 15 points or whatever. And it wouldn't necessarily need to be a quiz. I said it could be different groups. And if they're working really well, you might say team four, that's a fantastic answer. Or, you, you know, whatever, I can see you're working really hard. Let's give you some points. And they'll now move up to the, the top of the leaderboard. Um, so that was quite a handy little thing. But that's there down in the bonus um, resources. Things for random numbers was language teaching. You might just want a little starter where you randomly display some numbers on the board and they have to tell you what that number is in French or Spanish or, or German or whichever language you teach. Um, so they're the bonus resources. There's also their little help file, you know, which you can go through. I'm trying to, this is the sort of thing that I'm working on at the moment. So now I've got all the resources made to actually improve the sort of documentation and this sort of thing. But there's a little um, help thing which takes you through the different bits of the site, tells you about the saved files and the codes and, and this sort of thing. Um, anyway, and there's a contact form there, you know, so if you want to get in touch with me, you can use the contact form or my email address is just david at triptycoplus.com. Anyway, I'm, I said I was going to show you the bulk upload, didn't I? So when you want to create something, you would just click to create. You can see this idea of the, of the pack of cards. Um, so I'll show you the activity that we're going to do. I'll tell you what you would do before I show you how you would upload in bulk. I'll show you what you would do if you were just typing them in. So let's say I was doing an activity about colours. All I would do is just type red, green, blue, add a new card, pink, etc. So that's how I would go about creating my pack of cards. If I wanted to put something on the back, then I would just have two sides instead of one side. And so now I could remember my little bit of French. I could have the words in French on the back if I wanted to. Um, you can also add images, um, et cetera. Um, and you can have true or false. I'll maybe show you some true or false examples later, but for now we'll just keep it fairly, fairly straightforward. Um, in terms of the bulk upload, I'll show you the activity that we're gonna to make today. So forward on my desktop if I can open it. So I've just got a list of animals. So I've already typed it out. So we've got I've done it in English, but again, it could be in any language. Um, so I would just copy those. And then in Triptico, I would go across to options, import the data. And then I would just paste in there. So they're the animals I've just copied. You can see it's going to create 12 cards. You just need to uh, start a new line for each um, item that you want to have a card. Click add. And there we go. So you've now got 12 cards with those. Uh, my daughter laughing in the background, if you can hear something. <laughs> just, she's, uh, just about to go to bed. Um, so there we go. So we've got those uh, 12 cards there. So that's another sort of really easy. That's good for a class list too. If you've already got your class list somewhere else, all you would do is just click options, import, paste your class list in there. Um, and you, um, you go ready to go. The other thing you can do is you get more sort of confident with Triptico, you may not want to keep adding cards, so you can even just type in here. So if I was going to do that same colour resource, I could just type red, blue, green, oops, yellow, and that would just create four cards for me. So that's another way that you can do it. So whether you're pasting something or not, um, 
this is quite a handy thing can be like quite a, a time saver I'll just cancel that for now okay so let's just call this activity animals so we've just got one side at the moment and we've got these different animals i'll click to save it so let's call it zoom animals you can add some tags so these are quite handy if you for when you're using the filter to search for different things so if i was an mfl teacher or if this was in french um i could type the name of my school and um, even as a department you could have your own little unique code that you use which means you know which you could then search for um you know so different tags that you can add in there this is where i said about the option of making something public or private so if i just wanted to keep it private just something that i was going to use perhaps a class list where you know i wouldn't want to share that with anyone else and it wouldn't be particularly helpful for someone else to have the list of all the students in my class you can keep that as private or you can click and make it public i'll make this public now so if you want to open it later you can you can open and have a little look click save and there we go that's been saved so if i go back to my save files i've now got a new um, card a new save file zoom animals i can click it and you can see i can open it with all these different resources so we can open it with the spinner with the quiz with word magnets um you know all sorts of different things the different selectors we could open it with the order sorter uh, you, know, you could even discuss students discuss the favorite animal you know in, in french and explain why that animal is their favorite and move the animals up and down um, I don't know if that will, but uh, you know, it could be quite an interesting thing to do. Um, so there we go. So if we open it with bingo, because I've only got one side to these cards, this will make for a slightly boring um, bingo game. The students will write down any six of these things, but because we've only got one card, I'll just tell them the answer straight away. So fox, rabbit, etc. So what we could do is make that a little bit more interesting by adding a second card. Um, Something like that might be helpful, you know, as I was saying, just if it was a list of keywords, you know, open it with one of the selectors. So let's say the flip selector. You know, if I just wanted to randomly, as a starter activity, just ask students to maybe give me a sentence which includes the word rabbit, or give me a sentence which includes the word gazelle. These could be any sort of random words. You could have a, a, a hundred cards with just a hundred completely random words. Then you just say, um, you know, let's put this into a sentence. Um, you could even say, let's put it into a sentence in the past tense. Let's put the next one into a sentence in the future tense. You know, just, you know, really simple um, activities that you can run. Um, but anyway, so that's um, our uh, sort of very basic version. Let's make it a slightly more interesting. So I'll click to edit it. And let's add a second side. So now instead of just having the one side, we'll have two sides. Um, so now I could put the word for bear in French on the back or in German or Chinese or whatever. Or if this was a question, then I could put the answer here or even do things like put the name of a student and a specific question, specific question for that student in there. It could be a, a sum and then the answer on the back, all sorts of different ways in which you could use it. For this example, let's put some pictures on there. So at the moment, images are off, but you can click and we'll switch images on. Okay, so we can now add images to our cards. So I can either click this add image button and then I would just browse for the image on my computer. So you can see it's brought me to my animal folder. The first one was bear, so I'll double click. And there we go, the bear has been added to that card. I'll hide the text because I'm not gonna put anything, any text on this side, I'm just gonna have the picture of the bear. You can edit it if you want to. So you could you know, zoom in on a particular part of the image. You can rotate the images and scale the images and different things like that. Um, so there we go. That's just sort of focused on the, the bear's face. That can be quite handy if you've got a photograph and you just you know want to um, pick an element of it. I'll change it back so it's uh, the full image again. So there we go. So that's one way they could add an image. An even easier way, if I open this folder, so we've got elephant, so I can just drag it from the folder and just drop it straight onto Triptico. So now we've got a bear, an elephant, too many things covering the screen, a fox. Uh, what's that one? A gazelle. So hopefully you can see how easy it is to uh, create these different activities. You can also copy and paste, so you could go and find the image, copy it, and then just paste it into Triptico as well, if you wanted to do it that way. Um, if you find an image, you know, on a particular uh, website that you could use. Uh, 
keep going with these. Leopard. Going to the lion. Um, we've had a question, uh, David. Okay. Do all images have to be saved ahead of time? No, no. Let's say you could um, just go and copy and paste one. So if I was to go, I know there's a website that I use quite often, which is called Pexels. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what was the uh, what was the next animal? It was a rabbit. So if I was just to search for a rabbit, find a nice image. Nice if you use the sort of landscape ones. You don't have to do too much um, editing of them. It's quite a nice one. So I could just copy that. So um, copy image and then go back to Triptico. And if I was to right click and paste, there we go, it's pasted that. Uh, Very nice. For me. So it's up to you, however you want to do it. If you've got the images, I sort of made all these in advance and so I can just sort of drag them and drop them in. You might want to go online and just save them all to a folder and then drag them in, or you can just browse for them if they're in different parts of your computer. Um, so we'll delete that one for now. We'll stick to the sort of uh, cartoon. That's brilliant. And, you, and you mentioned earlier about um, having, say, 100 items in, a, in, a, in an activity. Is there a limit on how many um, bits of text you can have in a list or the number of images, etc.? No, I don't think so. I've not hit any sort of uh, limit. There's certainly no limit that I've placed on. I suppose if you had thousands and thousands of images, the only thing it might take a little while to to load the activities. So you might want to split them up uh, among a few different save files. But I mean, certainly in terms of if you're just using text, there'll be no issue whatsoever. It would just load in, you know, you know, just in seconds. Fantastic. Because I was thinking of say GCSE, you could have um, you know, lots and lots and lots and lots of questions um that the yeah. students could then practice in year 10 and year 11. I think that could be very useful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And again, you could share that with them and they could open it with lots and lots of different resources. You could have the, the sentences sort of grouped by different units. Um, yeah. So certainly as a way for um, students to revise, I think this is hopefully something that can be really, uh, really helpful. Um, so there we go. So now we've got all our animals and we've also got a picture of the animal there. So now let's save it. So I'll save it. I'll just keep it saved as Zoom animals as for our Zoom session. Take a little bit longer to load just because I've added those 12 images, but there we go. So I click through the save file. So I've now got my save file. You might notice, again, this isn't important, but just something that can be handy. This, this uh, activity has got a single yellow bar across the top of it. That's from the, uh, the, um, the order of the session activity. And that's just because it's only got one side. So I can tell straight away that that uh, save file has only got one side. This one's now got yellow and blue. So I know it's got front and the back. This one, I'm colorblind, but it's like a, I think it's like a pinky purpley color. Um, but that's if it's a lesson, so it'll be that color. And we might find one, some that are red and green. Let me see if I can find, there we go. So I've got this scientist activity, which is red and green, which tells me it's a true or false activity. So again, that's not vital to know, but it can be quite handy just so you can see straight away um, the type, you know, how many sides each card have got, whether it's a specific type of um, uh, save file. Um, so, yeah, so now if I click on Zoom Animals, so now let's open it with Bingo again. This time we'll get a more interesting version of Bingo. So this time the students will write down, whoops, hold on a second, what I've done. Uh, that's always quite handy to do. Um, so what it's done there, because I've got the images trying to show the images there, I want to actually show the words there. So I'll click on the animals, so I'll click to preview it. And so something else you can do, which is quite handy, use preview to sort of take out certain elements, but you can also switch the columns. So I'll switch those over. So the images are now on the front and the words are now on the back. So now we'll be able to open it with um, bingo, but that could be quite handy. So you could have the same, let's say the Spanish room activity from earlier. You could open it with a spinner and have the words in English at the start of the lesson and then open it at the end of the lesson, the exact same spinner, but with the switch, the columns switched. And so you'd have the words in Spanish um, on the back. Anyway, let's open it with bingo. Again, this is just a temporary switch. It doesn't actually sort of affect the save file. So now when the students write down the six different animals, so again, this could be in any language, they choose any sort of random six for their bingo card, click play bingo. And now when we use a clue, we get a picture of an animal. So the students actually have to know uh, what the French word for that particular animal is, rather than just tell them straight away fox and looking for the word fox, they've got to know which each animal is. Um, that same activity, um, let's see if we opened it with a hidden card, I'm sure this will work in terms of 
but I need to switch the columns again. I'll switch the columns and make it look a bit more interesting. So again, I'll just go into preview. Just switch the columns because I want the images to appear on these envelopes. So this is another uh, quite popular one. So it's called Hidden Card. And so the idea is the students have to tell me what they think is on the card that's hidden inside each envelope. So as the teacher, or I could ask a student to do this for me, I need to choose the 10 that I think are the easiest and they're gonna be worth 10 points. So let's say I thought elephant and lion and rabbit and bear were the easiest. I then choose four of the medium ones. These are gonna be worth 15 points. So I might choose panda, uh, tiger, zebra and giraffe and then it automatically selects the trickiest ones so these are the 20 point questions um, and then i can click to continue with the the board choose how many teams i want so let's say we have three teams we'll just stick call them team one two and three for now uh, we can whether decide whether we want to show how much each envelope's worth or we can hide it we'll kick we'll show them on uh, here so the idea with this one again is just that exact same save file i haven't done anything different it's just the exact same cards with the, the images on one side and the text on the other and now the students in their team so in this case team three would have to choose an envelope uh, if they're feeling confident they may choose a 20 point envelope these are the tricky ones if they answer incorrectly or if they answer correctly they all win the points if they answer incorrectly the other teams will get the points so there's a slight risk in being too uh, uh, ambitious but let's say they chose the uh, leopard and then I would ask them what they think is going to be written on this card, which is uh, hidden inside the envelope. Hopefully they would say leopard. We click to see. And there we go. So as the teacher, then I'd be able to award the points, yes or no. Again, that's quite easy for me in English, but if that was in a different language, um, so it becomes a slightly trickier. And again, for me as an English teacher, you know, if I was doing this with quotes and different characters, this also gives me the opportunity to discuss the quote and say what it, you know, uh, what it reveals about the character or why it was important or at which point in the play or the novel that quote, um, uh, you know, that character said that particular thing. So, you know, much as they're hopefully quite good fun as quizzes, it also gives you as a teacher an opportunity to pause and, um, you know, you could even say before I award these points, I want you to, to put this word into a sentence or I want you to tell me another animal uh, in Spanish which has got four legs or which lives, you know, in the same uh, place as a leopard or something like that. So there's uh, all sorts of different things you can do. So there we go. So again, there's so many different um, resources. I don't have time to show you them all, but uh, hopefully you can go through and, and sort of look at them in, in your own time. If, if you've got a Triptico account or if you set up a Triptico account, one that I'll just show you, which is quite handy, which makes use of our class list. So let me just scribble down our class list that we created with some people. Um, just before you do that, Dave, we're going to have a quick yeah. question from Jenny, which is um, uh, in the in the activity that you were just sharing, she said, uh, do I have to select each time or can the choices be saved? And so I, I said, do you mean uh, choice of activity? And she said choice of points value on the cards in that game. Yeah, uh, what you can, um, can you know? I think you have to, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, I've had that many different versions of these different resources. I did have one where you could select it automatically and it would just um, put them in order in which, you, so if you put the four easiest ones first and then the four medium ones second and the four more difficult ones last, it would automatically sort of color code them that way. But I get muddled whether, um, let me just double check, maybe I haven't. Let's see if I've got a good Shakespeare example. Let's see for hidden card. Jenny's saying it was possible in the old version, of Chico, but I don't know about the new one. <laughs> no, I don't know about the new one either. No, it's, <laughs> uh, right. no, it's not. No, um, it's maybe something I can add. Yeah, I did have it in an older one. Um, yeah, so then it would just take the first four that you um, uh, that you typed, and it would automatically make those the easiest ones. And then uh, that's all right, not a trick question. That's I had to, to have me puzzled myself, but yeah, I mean, hopefully, it won't be too. And again, if you're doing this with a class, you could ask a student to do this, or even a, two students, and they could discuss amongst themselves which ones they think are the uh, the easy ones and the tricky ones. The other thing I'll just show you while I've got it open again for a second time. Um, so there, I've so graded those. They're the ones that I think are the easy ones, and they're the ones that I think are the medium ones. These are the ones that I think are the tricky ones. This time we'll stick with three teams again, and this time I'll hide the values. So this time the students don't know when they select a card, how many points it's going to be worth. So that's something else you can do. So if the students, you know, maybe want to get uh, full uh, 20 points, then they might, you know, they'll have to find the ones that they think are particularly tricky. 
and they won't actually find out how many points they've won or lost until we um, we reveal the the answer. So hopefully in this case they would say Romeo and Juliet. Um, and there we go. So if they got it correct, then we clicked yes. That's just an extra little um, something that you can do uh, if you wanted to um, with that. So yeah. Um, so what was I going to show you? Oh yes, yeah, with our um, class list. So there is one called a task spinner, which I think is quite popular. So again, I'll just use those Shakespeare quotes. I shouldn't really show it, but anyway, I've got those uh, written, written down here. So this one sort of combines an activity that you've created with your class list. So you could either type the different names, the names of your students in, uh, or if you'd already got them saved as a class list, which I have. So when I created my Zoom class list, it was 44886. So I can check again, I can delete if certain people, if a student was absent, I can delete them and they won't be included, but we'll just leave everyone there for now. OK, so what we we'll do now, it's got all the 12 names of the 12 names of the people in this session that are selected. And so we can pull down on this wheel and it'll select somebody and they would have to tell me which Shakespeare play this quote is from. So we'd say Ursula, which Shakespeare play is this from? And then we can click the card and turn it over and it's kingly again that's the best example for language teachers but it could be a sentence in spanish and you flip it over and they've got to translate it for you or it could be a, a sentence in the past tense and you say ursula put that into the uh, future tense for me or whatever it would be and then we would carry on uh, ursula will be removed from the wheel so she can sort of rest easy unless you don't want to remove students once they've been selected so you could keep uh, ursula on her toes um but we'll just spin it again and this will select another student from my class. So this time it has selected Chris. So I'll ask Chris which Shakespeare play is this from or, um, you know, um, how would we put this sentence into uh, French or whatever it would be. And then we can click and, and reveal. So that's how, one, you know, a nice way that you can combine your class list with um, one of your saved activities. Um, and it's just, it does, uh, sort of a concentrated mind of it. When I've done workshops in the past, some teachers have done this and uh, my name has been included on the uh, the wheel. And it's quite stressful when you, you, know, you see your name about to be uh, selected to answer a question, especially when it's something on English literature or something like that. But uh, so that's another um, resource that you can use. Um, so yes, yeah, so let's go back to my um, lesson. So let's go back to my... This is what we hope to achieve in our... Um, session. So hopefully you've got an idea now of what Triptych Coat is. I've sort of only really scratched the surface. There's lots and lots of resources that I haven't even had a chance to show you. I was going to show you true or false activity. I maybe we'll just show you that quickly because that's a handy one to um, to look at. We just have a look at an example of a class list. We saw how easy it is to create your class list, either paste the students in or just create the cards. Then you can use that class list with the group resource or with a selector resource or with a spinner. You could have two sides, one side with a student name and a, you know, a, a task for that specific student. They wouldn't need to know that the, the task had been sort of um, pre-selected for them. Um, you can open it with the task spinner as we saw, so we can spin that wheel and we can you know, randomly allocate uh, questions to students. We had a look at some examples for learning languages. So we looked at word magnets. We had a look at how you can uh, use that same uh, pack of cards with bingo. Uh, I can't think of the resource we looked at now. Um, I can't think, but anyway, you know, um, there's also all the different ones. We've had to go create an activity, share an activity. I showed you uh, just quickly, didn't I, earlier, how you can actually share the link. Let's go back to my, let's get a Spanish one rather than the Shakespeare one. Um, so if we were to open this, let's say open it with the spinner this time, and I'll show you how the spinner works when we've got two sides to the card. So um, we would spin the spinner again. We looked at this with the class list now because this is cards that have got two sides. We can actually click this magnifying glass and it'll tell us what's on the other side of the card. So the spinner's slightly more sophisticated. If I wanted to share this with a student, I could either just copy that link um, and that would, you know, they'd just be able to click it and access it immediately, as long as it's marked as public. Remember, if it's marked as private, then it'll say this file is private, you can't view it. So you just need to make sure it's marked as public. And then the students will be able to access it either by sharing that link or, as we said, they would just click here, it says, are you a student with a code? 
or you could just give them this link straight to the code page it's just forward slash enter code they'd enter the code which case in this case it was 6666 and then they could either choose a resource to open with so if you wanted to open it with display quite a nice one for revision um just get the message about opening a new window. So we might want to hide the cards in column one, and then the students would have to just work through, and uh, they can click and you know use this for revision for the different things. Maybe leave ones they're not sure about till later and come back to them. Um, there, uh, yeah. Or as I said, the other thing you can do if you wanted it to open with, let's say, word magnets, type the first two letters of that particular resource W O. Submit the code and it'll open now immediately with word magnets and they'll get this activity with the, the background, which they can have a go at and then screenshot their answer to share it with you. Or, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be something that they even share. It could just be something that just there is something for them to use for revision in their own time. Um, you know, it's not necessarily a set task. It's just something for, for them that's there for them to use. I was thinking maybe even if you did have a, a space on a website or a um, even just a word document you could have you know for the different units you could have lots of triptych activities that would you know if you're revising that unit then why not try activity 6666 or you know all different activities you can put in there um so just being behind there we got a couple of more questions, David. If that's okay, um, yeah, but this course, is yeah. this is brilliant. You, there's lots of really lovely comments about how uh, how much people are enjoying the activities. It's it's fantastic. Well, fantastic. Um, so, because Christine has asked uh, for the task spinner activity you showed, yeah. do you need the same number of student uh, of um, yeah uh, of uh, students and questions, or uh, can questions be used twice or more? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so let's just say let's open it with the Spanish room one. Um, yeah, they could be used twice or more, or let me find it. What's it called? Task spinner, isn't it? Um, the other thing you could do, so let's just say if we just put three names in. Um, so now it'll select from these three. So I'll pull down to make a selection. I need to tell me what this is, and I can flip it over and we can see. Now it's just the next one will just select and we'll carry on. It'll put the three students back in again. The I suppose they could be students, they could even be, I suppose if you've got your students working in groups, so let's say again we'll type it, you could just put, oops, group one, try to type too quickly, group two, group three, group four, so it doesn't even need to be students, if you've got four groups in your classroom you could just say right somebody from group yeah. Sort of group four as a whole tell me what this is you know agree and then tell me what it is and then again if you had the you could have the um scoreboard open in another tab and if they open answer correctly give them some points and there we go so now group four i'm sure if you did so if you rather than removing the selected um we'll keep everybody in you can also turn the sound off you found the sound sound a bit annoying you can turn that off you just change the color of the background oops my telephone ring sorry oh, <laughs> i thought it was uh, <laughs> You can also, uh, yeah, change the colour. So, you know, if you wanted to, you could go for something purple pizzazz if you wanted it to look a bit more, uh, a bit more pizzazz to your thing as well. Um, so, yeah, so now we're selected. So now the groups won't be removed. So it may select, you know, the same group as well. So you can see with this one, group two, been selected. On the subject of personalising um, things, um you can also if you go to your accounts so once you've signed and if you click my account uh, you can choose a preferred font so perhaps you know a, a number of teachers who taught japanese got in touch to say that the sort of default font that i used didn't work particularly well with japanese script and um, so you can now go and change so you can choose any you know any of the google fonts um some teachers as well ask for comic sans you know, sort of primary teachers like to use Comic Sans, so I changed everything to Comic Sans, which didn't go down very well. So I uh, changed everything back, and you can now just go and um, choose the, the font that works best for you. So if I go back to my, uh, you know, my lesson, but if I now go to a save file, let's say open, uh, let's, say, let's just open this presentation that we've done for today. This is a lesson builder. I'm not even really showed you the lesson builder, but so you can see now it's... Um, change the font and that font will be changed if you would share that with your students they'd see that in in that font as well um so that's there as well just as a little option if that works better especially young learners as well just seeing the letters formed um you know in 
as you would want them to write, it can be quite helpful too. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's another little thing that you can do in your account. You can also set your default background color. Um, and if you if you you know if you do decide to subscribe, you can uh, view and edit um, payment things, and you can change your username and password, uh, change your email address, and that sort of thing in there as well. That's um, fantastic. I, I'd love us uh, to see the lesson builder if that's possible. Right. Um, okay. If that's um, okay, we've got another question as well uh, from Ursula. Is there a ranking where teachers can see how students uh, do individually? No, uh, not at the minute. I mean, that's what I say about, um, I mean, it's all very informal. So the students don't need to register. They don't need to sign in. They don't need to, you know, put an email address or anything, which is great. And from a GDPR point of view, it's fantastic. It means I'm not sort of storing any student data, but it also means that there's no sort of analysis at the end of a particular topic. Um, but, you know, I quite like that and I quite like these things to be quite informal. I am trying to think of ways that I can um, add some sort of analytics ideally without sort of uh, requiring students to create accounts. I think that would be, you know, I'd, I'd rather not do that if I could help it. But I was thinking maybe if I can work around it where the student types in, you know, if, if a teacher gave a student a particular code that they sort of recognised as being that particular student. So it could be, you know, because each individual subscriber has their own code anyway. So I could use that as the sort of start. And then, you know, if the students added their initials afterwards, you would know who's done it without them actually needing to sort of submit any personal information or or anything like that. But no, at the minute, it's all sort of very um, informal, which I sort of liked. Again, I think that's maybe sort of reflects back on my uh, background as an English teacher. You know, with this sort of activity, I quite like the fact that the, there isn't necessarily a right or wrong answer. You know, if we were doing about who's most to blame for the death of Juliet or why should we choose a language? I quite like that students feel that they can, you know, any of them could be, you know, they can put it in any order. There is no right or wrong answer as long as they can sort of justify and um, explain their decisions. You can with this one. I did relent eventually and you can add a check button. Oh, you can't. <laughs> That's coming soon. I was in an older version. I get muddled up with what I've built, but I will add the check uh, function back in and then you can click and it will actually check if it's in the right order. But I always quite like that sort of the informal nature and the fact that students can, you know, say with the quiz resource, they can experiment and it doesn't really matter if they get it wrong. It's not like it's reported back to the teacher that they answered incorrectly so they can sort of just, um, you know, sort of learn in their own time without sort of feeling that they are being assessed. But I know some people would like that. So that's something I'll, I'll try to sort of incorporate in the future if I can. Um, yeah, in terms of the lesson. So when you click the create button, the first thing you'll see is this, you know, create a simple activity again, just like this um, idea of the pack of cards. I've got it in there, you know, so you would create a pack of cards with content on one side or both. You can also click to create a lesson. So that's what I did for my presentations. This is actually a lesson with these different slides. So we click to create a lesson you get a slightly different um, interface. And so what you would do, you would um, think of it as adding slides. So you clicked add a slide so you could um, add a title slide or text slide or image slide, text scramble, which was the one where I put the sentence in the correct order. You can add triptych activities, flip cards, image scrambles, all these different things. So we started with a title, then we could just call it, still got my sort of comic font, but let's just say, call it Zoom session. Lesson example, click done. I can add a new slide. So I may want to add some text, which may be the sort of objectives of the lesson, or it could be um, a question that I wanted the students to sort of uh, ponder as they were sort of uh, getting ready to start the lesson. Um, so I could uh, have a question, why is it important to, and then we could have something, you know, there. So that could be something that's just displayed on the board for the students when they walk into the classroom. We may then add new slides, let's say we want a triptych activity. I remember the one was 6666. Um, so I could decide what I wanted to open it with. So let's find what we haven't looked at. So let's say the match resource. Um, well, actually, let's say, which would be a good one to look at. Where's the answer? It's quite a good one for a, a whole class type thing. So we'll click to open it with that particular resource. Um, yeah, and then so we could go on, add different slides, we could add an image. And you can add hotspots to your image. So if I was to click and select an image, again, it's not the best example, that animal. So it's found the panda, but I could add some hotspots here. So again, in any language, could add here. Um, I knows 
and so on. So we're getting sort of building up a, a sort of a presentation click to preview the lesson. So we get it, so we get the title, the Zoom session lesson example, and go to the next slide. So this will be uh, what the students would see when they're walking in. So why is it important to, and then whatever my sort of question was, or it could be three questions for them to think about. Uh, then we'd have the activities. So how many teams? So I can go through and have this one. Computers just start making a funny noise. So this one will be all right. Um, have numbers on the back. So the idea with this one is the students have got to remember where each answer is. So it shows them initially. We have to in their teams try and remember where each of these words are these English words. And then they would turn over, oops, turn over a card, and they'd have to try and find the English uh, word in here, wherever it would be. They can change the card if they wanted to. You get three chances to change the card, and then you would have to try and find it in, in there. Then it'd be up to them to say, have they found a match or not? So again, it's that idea of, you know, the, the computer doesn't necessarily do everything for you. You've then got to make a decision about whether you found a match. So you need to know um, whether it is a match. So the other team will actually get some points. Um, but carrying on with the lesson, we get our little image with the hotspots. So we could then click and view the different hotspots that I added. So this could be a picture of, um, I don't know, a beach scene or something or an airport. And you could have lots of different uh, hotspots for students to click on and find. Um, and that was all we added to that particular lesson. Again, you can just share those really easy. So um, this one is the one that I created for this particular session. I suppose I could, if I just copy it, if I paste that into the chat, then if you wanted to, you'd be able to click that and it'll just open immediately for you. So that's as, you know how you would share um, things with a student. Or you can see it's got the code 45888. So I could do it that way. Go to add my code, type 45888. Don't get an option this time because it's just going to open with a lesson. So that's another way in which you could, which you could share your lesson with students. So again, so as Joe said, if a student was absent, you could say, well, there's the lesson. When I was even thinking, when I was teaching this, it'd be handy if I was on a course or if I knew I was going to be absent or missing a lesson. I could even just give this either to the students to work through independently or in groups, or if it was another teacher who's happy to sort of have this on the board at the start, they could just sort of work through the lesson. Um, themselves would be quite a, a sort of helpful thing possibly um and then yeah even students who weren't absent if they just wanted to sort of a bit of a refresher before an exam or before a test then you can just share the lesson and say there's the you know work through that in your own time and uh, use that for your revision it's got some different examples that you can do uh, and so on um, yes, yeah, so that's the lesson builder very quickly, a very quick uh, example of the lesson builder, but that's brand new. So, I mean, if anyone's got any feedback about that, it'd be, it'd be great to hear. This is my very sort of you know, thing that I've wanted to do for ages and ages and never been able to do it. And, you know, sort of a, a finally have now. So I'm hoping that'll be a, a helpful thing just with, you know, I used to use PowerPoint a lot, but it's very sort of passive. It's just a lot of clicking next, next, next. This is something where you can have that content and have that information, but also have some interactive elements, have some triptych activities, have an order sort of where you've actually got to put things in the correct order before you move on to the next slide. Um, you know, so hopefully that's something that can be uh, can be helpful, especially as it's so easy to uh, to share. That's fantastic. Jenny's just said um, game changer. <laughs> uh, for the team builder that uh, for the for the um lesson builder that's uh lovely wow oh she's also said that she loves the tech scrambler activity as well uh, yeah it was, uh, yeah and you could have you could even just have a lesson which is just 10 tech scrambles and just work through those at the start of a lesson you know it's completely up to you how you use it um so yeah that could be quite a handy thing your lesson could be nothing more than 10 tech scrambles that you put in the right order and then you can add feedback so my feedback in my example was uh, shall we create an activity um but i suppose for a language teacher it could be you know you put the sentence in the correct order then it could be that's great let's put it into the past tense or or whatever it would be um so you know let's you know uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I'm trying to think of different examples, but you know, if you wanted to use plurals or whatever it would be, then yeah. you could do that, or you know, slightly just choose a different adjective or um, etc. Amazing. I what I thought would be nice now, if it's okay, is if I allow yeah. people to open up their microphones and their and their webcams because there's been such a 
uh, a lovely um, a number of great questions and comments in the chat. And, and then if someone wants to then ask David a question directly uh, using your microphone, I'm thinking Glenn, for example, who's who's been great, or Jenny, uh, or what have you, um, then that would be lovely to hear from you. You will be recorded if you do do that. I know Glenn won't have a problem with that, but um, <laughs> as, he, as he appears on so many webinars. But I'm just going to allow people to do that right now. So I'm going to allow people to start their videos if they want to. And they can unmute themselves as well. So if you want to turn on your, on your webcam and and ask something directly to David, oh, there we are, Glenn. Do you, what do you want to say to David? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Joe. I've been using Triptico for I'm I'm guessing maybe six or seven years now, David. And uh, I must say, as I said earlier, students love the activity, even if you're in a face-to-face -face or a virtual environment, as we saw today. They get psyched. Is my name going to come up next? What am I going to have to answer? It's a tremendous, tremendous activity. David, I was just going to ask you, where did the name come from? <laughs> <laughs> Good yeah. I may have missed that in the beginning. No, no, you didn't know. This is another uh, very common question. It just came from the fact that I, I, I sort of made it. Like I, said, I made all these resources for my own classroom, and then I wanted to put them online, so I needed a name for it. And I never thought it would go anywhere beyond my own classroom. There was a song playing on my um i play um, on my uh, ipod by a band called the goten project goten project and it was called triptico so i thought why not call it triptico and then as it's become more popular people they want to know what it means you know and and it really is nothing more than me uh needing a name for a website and just thinking that's good i did quite like it it, it is a sort of a you know you get like triptych paintings so i thought you know i can sort of maybe uh, sort of reverse engineer it and say it's all about the um, the teacher and the student and the, or whatever, but I don't know. I've always struggled a little bit with that. But uh, yeah, it's just it's just the song. It could have been called anything. It could have, whatever song came on shuffle next could have been the name of this particular <laughs> website. But uh, it's, it's not such a bad one. I, yeah, it's uh, I, I just couldn't think of a name for it. So in the end, I thought, well, no one's going to see it. So uh, I'll just call it Triptico. Lovely. That's a that's a great great answer. That's fantastic. Um, anybody else who'd like to put a question to David or make a comment? Um, it'd be, oh, Jenny's saying could have been called Dancing Queen or Bohemian Rhapsody. There we are. I think there would have been a copyright <laughs> issue around that possibly. But, but, uh, but yeah. Any anybody else that would like that's feeling brave enough to turn on their microphone and and say something? Jenny, looks like you're turning on your microphone right now. I've switched my microphone on. Yeah. Hi, David. Hi, um, hi Joe. Uh, I've just got a question. I've been really impressed that all the sound has been working whilst right. we've been in the web. Because every time I've done online teaching and used Triptico, I've never managed to get the sound to go to the people who are listening. So I'm enjoying the sound in, in my office, but they don't get it across the across the airwaves. So maybe that's something I'm doing wrong, but it was great to hear the sound, but I wish I could do it like you do. Right. Well, I did. I, I don't think you'll be able to see the, the, the Zoom uh, thing, but it does have in Zoom. It did, which Joe's talking about, which I didn't know, but you can click. If you click more in the little bar, if you are using, using Zoom, I don't know if you can see that, whether that just shows on my computer, but it does say share computer sound and you can check that. Um, and that would do rather than, than relying on the microphone to pick it up. I think that makes for a better uh, sound quality. So if you're yeah. using Zoom, certainly that's something I'm going to do in the future, because uh, in the past, I've just used the microphone. It can maybe sound a little bit sort of uh, tinny. So that's quite a nice, a nice way to do it. Yeah. We had yeah. it quite nice in the classroom. And you see when I'm running workshops, people seem to like, you know, the bingo resource, the fact you press bingo and it shouts out bingo and it uh, things like that seem quite popular. You can, if they, if they annoy you, some people find them quite irritating, the different sounds. That's a Russian example of, uh, uh, for the order sorter, you can turn the sound off if you want to as well. It's completely up to you and then it'll just be silent. Um, I used to have done the bingo game. I used to have it. It was sort of had like lots of birds on this. It was like a, a telegraph wire type thing, and the different numbers were like sheets hung on the uh, or sheets of paper hung on the wire, and these birds would cheap and uh, chirp at various times. And people say draw them around the bench. So I've, I've learned to sort of uh, allow people to, to mute the sounds if they want to. Uh, so yeah, you can do that. Cool. Well, thank you so much, David. It's been really, really interesting uh, seeing all the. The, all the different activities and how you can um, pull them all together into a set of um, into a cycle of activities. I think that's that's wonderful. And it's been amazing to see such lovely comments in the chat and some great questions as well. You've given us a really comprehensive overview of how uh, Tripsco uh, can be used. And I know that you said there's so many, so many other things that you could have shown us, but yeah. we've, only, we've had a limited amount of time. But uh, I think you've given us a really good 
a taster in what can be done, particularly focusing on activities that lend themselves really well to languages. I think it's been fantastic. So thank you so much for your time, David. I should just say as well, if you haven't um, got a trip to core account, then you can, there's a button here just to click to create a free account. Uh, oh, I'm already logged in, so it won't let me do it. So if I just log out. So you click to free, all you would do is type in your name, your email address, then you choose a username and a password, and then you've got your Triptico account and you can start using that straight away. When you sign in, well, that's one thing I was going to show you, that you, you'll get a true or false activity as well. You'll see the red or green one called scientists. Oh, it's there. <laughs> that was good. So yeah, I said I would show you a true or false activity. Um, so in this case, you've got to find the scientist. So if you find a scientist. Green. So this was the true or false. So all you do with this one is you would need to go through and mark the answers that are true and mark the answers that are uh, false. So again, I've got tenses in my mind, but if it was past tense, you wanted to find the sentence in the past tense, you'd mark those as true and the others as false. And you can also add a bit of extra information. So I did some extra information about each particular scientist there. If the answer incorrectly, so if they chose Samuel Beckett or Henry Matty, get incorrect and you can find out why you were uh, Correct. You can see you've got seven more to find. So yeah, that was the true or false. That's the only thing that I didn't show you on the um, when you're creating. But it was one of the little options if you want to uh, to create some true or false activities. You can still use it with bingo. Bingo would just filter out all the false um, cards and would just use the true one, so it wouldn't sort of play a game of bingo with with false things. Um, and all the resources would do that. Um, so yeah, and if you've got I suppose just today as well, if you've got any questions, there's a contact form on the website. Or my email address is just david at triptychoplus.com. Um, I'm also on Twitter. I've just joined LinkedIn, so I don't know if that's a good way for people to use that. I'm sure searching for David Riley on LinkedIn would uh, uh, will bring me up. But yeah, emails and even just if you haven't got a question, just feedback. It's lovely to hear from people, especially been so everyone's been so isolated for so long. It's uh, it's great to hear if people do use it or it's helpful in a lesson or uh, any sort of suggestions or comments like say people get in touch and say you know it'd be great if you could add this to this resource or that or I don't quite understand how to use this and um you know with all that sort of feedback's really really helpful for me um, um you know positive or, or negative so always really appreciated that's amazing I mean one thing that comes to mind is with that sort of that uh, reordering tile activity if it was possible for you to record your voice so you could for languages um it would mean that you could then uh well for example you could have like um uh, an audio player you play the audio and then you uh, having listened to the audio you then put the tiles into the correct order that might be that might be one idea and then secondly yeah, yeah. each time you move the tile it says the word um or maybe some sort of text-to-speech functionality uh, yeah, that yeah. Could be actually, really good for listener comprehension practice i think yeah one which might be just to show you again a resource so this is the spanish room example that i showed you earlier so this was the sort of different items in the room where we did it with magnets and dragged it to the background that is which might be quite interesting. This is, again, just an experiment with a resource called Listen. And so this will actually speak uh, whatever words you typed onto your oh, card. Oh, great. So if I get a Spanish example, so Monica, I might have to flip it over because it might try and speak the English. Oh, no, it's not. So then you would see the word keys and then they would have to click. Ventana. Llaves. Very nice. Ordenador portátil. Teléfono móvil. And so that's all using your browser's text to speech. So you just have to make sure that you choose the correct language. But again, that's just taken, you know, that very simple set of cards, which had words in English and Spanish, and it puts it, um, it speak it to you. I can't remember uh, which one you would click and. So then you can sort of work through these different. Alfombra, silla, almohadilla. Yeah. So that's something else. Uh, so that's something that's sort of brand new. I mean, I would maybe like to investigate that further, that whole, text to speech things that the problem with people recording their own voices is suddenly the file size increases massively and you end up, I'm going to end up sort of yeah posting lots of things on the database <laughs> whereas if the text to speak is 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 good enough quality then it does all that without you know increasing it's still an absolutely minute file just with text on both sides but it, you know you, your browser can actually speak it to you so uh yeah that's something amazing like amazing well it's been it's been fantastic we we have come to the hour and a half now i think we've it probably really... it's time for us to stop <laughs> but you've done you've done such a great job david showing us everything and i'm sure that people will find it very very interesting and useful to watch back the recording to remind themselves of all the things that chip can do so all i can say is sincerely thank you so much for your time this evening uh, is am i right in saying you haven't had your tea yet no, I would no. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna <laughs> That's why you talk about supermarkets there. all the time at the beginning. Well, you've definitely, about, deserved, yes. you've definitely deserved your tea, 
uh, David. And for those people that don't, uh, if, if, if people listening to this who are up from the UK think that I'm talking about a cup of tea, I mean an evening meal. Is that what you say up in the Northeast? Would you say you're having your tea? About me too, yeah, yeah. There we are. So, so the evening meal. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So without further ado, I think we should stop the recording now so you can have something to eat. But you've done a great job, David. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for uh, thanks for, for coming along. Thanks for, for hosting the session, Joe. I really appreciate it. No problem at all.